Good evening, folks. This video is both a reminder of what we need to watch for as Earth's catastrophe cycle is unfolding and identifying the signs we've said to watch for in the past. With this morning's reminder about the activation of nearby stars, it naturally spawns the questions about using them to try to time the galactic current sheet impact on the solar system. But evidence suggests it's a long-term event, likely began here in 1859, and every star is different, requiring a different time to activate and a different form of that outburst. We have also gone over how it would be much easier to track this disaster if we continued to get updates on Earth's magnetic field strength. We got acceleration points and numbers on the field strength loss until 2015. We went from 5% loss per century to 5% per decade, and we have no idea of how things are moving after the 2017 acceleration. And I'm not fully confident they'll update this fervently, if at all. But we are not left in the dark. Two critical items we said to watch in our disaster book are showing up this year very solidly. This is in section 6.4, appropriately about the best way to judge the timeline, given that we are not getting updates on Earth's field and we can't really rely on those extrasolar timeline markers. The first thing we can watch is lightning. This is something that should be seen surging in number, power, and perhaps even form. A considerable portion of our solar terrestrial physics textbook, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, is about how lightning is triggered by cosmic rays and solar storms, and the weakening magnetic field should whisper that secret to the lightning, who will promptly snitch on the overloaded capacitor of the planetary electrodynamics. Our field is weakening. We're juicing up more and more. We've recently learned that the Arctic is shattering their lightning records. Many want to blame global warming, but the northern polar cusp is where solar energetic particles prefer to enter, and we would expect this atmospheric electricity effect there with Earth's weakening magnetic field. The global warming explanation doesn't work so well for the new mountaintop energetic pulses, a new form of upward lightning just identified, and in case you are wondering, it is utterly absurd that they've identified two new types of lightning in one year. And thunder snow? No. No global warming at work in the cloud electrodynamics there. Record lightning? Two new forms. That's about exactly what we've said to watch for as the field continues tanking on us here in the catastrophe cycle. But right after that in the book is found the second critical thing for us to be monitoring, space weather. One of our most popular presentations of the previous decade was an examination of the 2015 solar storms, which nearly had major global effects, but were caused by puny space weather. We had wondered if it was a sign of the weakening field, and a similar event is known to you space weather peer-reviewed literature experts out there from August 2018, the unexpected geomagnetic storm. And so far, we've already seen two overreactive dings to the planet just this year. Solar Cycle 25 is ramping up, and we can finally look at more than just the lightning. A minor CME produced a strong storm earlier this year, and a very minor CME recently grazingly gave us a love tap, and the field spazzed out for most of this past Monday. What we're watching for is space weather having a greater effect than it should be. Folks, it is indeed impossible to use the galactic markers, and if the officials don't update the field loss or loss rate, we are left seeking other means to run the timeline. Lightning and space weather, it's a great one-two punch, especially because before the greatest solar flash, before the magnetic excursion finalizes, the weakened field will likely leave us vulnerable to a space weather event and those terrestrial storms. The best way to judge how far we're tracking down the line is the same thing that provides the most imminent natural threat to modern condition. For this, we have about a 1 in 4 chance of taking such a solar storm this sunspot cycle would likely be before 2027, and by the 2030s, the field should be down to an almost untenable state. That's why we need to be as vigilant as the sun is dependable to rise each morning. Speaking of which, I'll see you tomorrow for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.